Hey, I'm Eric Goodwin, and today I'm going to be checking out Radiohead's album, In Rainbows. This one is very highly hyped up. So I'm super excited to check it out. A little bit about me, I'm a caricature artist, which means I draw funny, crazy, exaggerated portraits of people's faces in a very wacky, cartoony style. If you're interested in seeing any of that, I've uploaded a bunch of caricature reactions of people seeing their drawings for the first time here on my channel. I also love music, and I also enjoy making some of my own music, which you can also find on this channel. Anyway, this is my second reaction to a Radiohead album. A week or two ago, I checked out Hail to the Thief and loved it. Became maybe my favorite Radiohead album so far. So far, I've heard everything in order from Pablo Honey all the way through Hail to the Thief. So In Rainbows, of course, is the next one. And I am very excited to check this out. I think uh, it's going to be something new and fresh, exciting, innovative, some kind of next unpredictable step, perhaps kind of like Hail to the Thief was, kind of like Amnesiac and Kid A were after OK Computer. So if you want to check out my uh, previous Hail to the Thief reaction, of course, that's on my channel. The only other reaction I've done is to the Deftones album Koi no Yokan, which was my first ever reaction video. And if you like Radiohead, there's probably a good chance you also like Deftones because they also experiment with atmosphere and uh, rock that's a little outside of the norm. So in this video, I'll be talking about some music theory, how the music is mixed, and of course how it feels on a first listen, some of my first thoughts. And then I'm sure later on at another time I'll check out the lyrics, but on a first reaction and on a first listen, I want to really just take in the music as kind of a pure musical experience with just how the music feels overall as a whole. Not sure what I'm doing with my hands. I'm just trying to uh, form these thoughts into shapes in the air. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, you guys will have to let me know in the comments, what should I listen to after this? Should I go right to In Rainbow's Disc 2? Should I check out some of their live stuff, like I Might Be Wrong, the live recording? I know that's from more of the amnesiac and earlier era. Um, should I check out In Rainbows from the Basement? Or should I just go to the next album, which is King of Limbs? Um, anyway, I'm pretty excited. I don't know where this album's going to go. Um, the last album was very musically diverse and kind of felt like a collection of a lot of experimentation with soft and heavy music, with electro and rock, uh, fusing a lot of their earlier rock with some of their previous electro and kind of combining them and going somewhere new that uh, made me just excited to get into this whole Radiohead journey through their albums and really seeing where they're going in a way that is kind of rare for me to get so excited about a band. So that's pretty much why I'm doing this. Um, before I start listening. So yeah, I bought this record today at a record store and I thought I'd get this so I can really like look at the details of the album artwork, maybe check out a little bit of the vibe, the visual vibe of the album before I listen to it. Um, and I'm going to open this in a minute, but I thought I'd share some of my other records that I've bought new. I bought a lot of records used because they're cheap and it's kind of a cool way to discover new stuff. But, uh, just to kind of give you a taste of the other, some of the other kind of music I listen to, I've got Caravan Palace. This is electro swing so imagine kind of like swing lounge kind of jazzy mixed with uh kind of modern electro really fun kind of dancey that album's great um i got tools album lateralis it's super shiny one of my favorite albums of all time 
The record, for some reason, has a couple of the tracks in a different order, I think, just so it can fit on the records, but um, pretty cool just to look at. Let's see, I've got uh, this new uh, boy band. They're pretty good. Um, you should check them out. It's called the Beatles or the Beatles. What else? I've got volume two of Guardians of the Galaxy. Pretty great. Kind of soulful uh, 70s funk. Of course. Of course you know that. You've seen the movies. Um, this was a gift from a friend on my birthday. This is one of my favorite rappers. And this is just the instrumentals for it. Very moody, kind of psychedelic, trippy. Uh, you should definitely hear this uh, with the rap, though, as well, because this guy's a lyrical mastermind. And then I just saw no effects on their uh, final tour, punk band. Great, great band. This is The Decline, their 18 minute long punk rock epic, live at the Red Rocks, of course, in uh, Denver, Colorado. Okay, so I'm going to check this out. A big reveal. For one thing, this kind of reminds me of like a very kind of cosmic uh, paint splatter. Feels very artsy and organic. Love the colors. Like I've seen this pop up for like at least over a year. Like I think I've seen this album cover like quite a few times. It's very super iconic. Like even though I haven't heard it, I know what this album cover looks like. Interesting. Uh, it looks like it has all the lyrics just on the, uh, the record sleeve, but almost looks like kind of data like a code or something because <laughs> they have it like basically aligned to fit the edges and then just spread out. It's very intentionally kind of abstract with the lyrics, kind of a, like a digital contrast against the organic shapes of the background. Let's see what the, uh, record itself looks like. Well, can't say it's very colorful, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure the music will be. Yeah, it's like a very strange contrast of very simple and just kind of black and gray in contrast to the, the colors of the rest of it, but I'm not going to be reading along with the lyrics, but maybe I will. Eh, nah, I'm just going to listen. Yeah, I don't want any spoilers of what the lyrics are, but uh, it's cool that they're all there when I want to check them out. <sighs> oh, man, I don't know if I'm ready. It's been a lot of hype. I believe in them. Let's see. There are 10 tracks. It's 43 minutes, so it's a little bit more than a 10 minutes shorter than Hail to the Thief. Of course, there's Ra In Rainbow's Disc 2. Yeah, I guess I haven't really, like, fully mentally prepared myself to listen to this yet. I think I was more concerned about just saying everything I wanted to say before I started. Um, man, <laughs> I guess I just have to start because I'm not going to be ready. I just have to check it out. I know there's a lot kind of, uh, a lot of expectation on me, hopefully having a great experience from everyone watching and of course myself. And, uh, I'm excited. I don't really know what to expect, but, uh. That's what's exciting about it. 
So, let's get going. Track number one, 15 Step. And uh, I'm not ready, but let's go for it. Very abstract. It's got a little bit of like a hip hop vibe to it again. Kind of dancey again. It's kind of like a noise music y drum type of beat going on. Feels a little jazzy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the time signature's changing. I like it. It sounds new and fresh, and uh, it makes sense that it's Radiohead, and yet it sounds new. Like, I haven't heard this before. It's got a very, like, chill vibe to it while being, like, very dancey. Just an interesting contrast. Ooh, that bass is cool. Oh, I just heard some kids yelling. <laughs> Whoa. That's some cool panning and like fading. Oh, this is awesome. Man. Shit, I'm so happy right now. The texture of the percussion is so cool. The yelling again. Man, the vibe of this is so feel good it's very like pop while also being very like kind of hip-hop and funk and kind of soft rock almost surfy sounds like something that was created at the beach like it has a very summery vibe which I don't think I've ever said for or thought for any of their music before dang yeah I wouldn't have guessed man I got like full body chills I wouldn't have guessed that uh, they would just have so much fun I guess I expected, I mean, kind of like on the last album too, like a lot of the songs were very fun and dancey and you don't really expect that from kind of the moodiness of like Kid A and Amnesiac where it's sometimes it's like very mellow and just kind of like you listen to it. You don't necessarily move a lot to it. This was very dancey and very uh, energetic, but chill. Definitely something like, you could put on like in Hawaii while you're walking at the beach. And uh, man, that was so fun. They were definitely experimenting a lot with sound design. There were a lot of like swells and sweeps and pans from left to right and right to left. And the drumming was had a lot of really interesting textures in it. it sounded very kind of like almost noisy like there was distortion and like kind of bits and dirt and grit to it um but but because of how the rhythms were created with the percussion it felt just very upbeat while also having it doesn't sound like a drum kit it sounds just like interesting craft interestingly crafted percussion 
while also having like a really nice chill yeah almost like hawaiian vibe to the guitar and his singing was just very very kind of pop rock yeah that's like already up there with one of my top favorite radiohead songs it was unexpected man just the vibe i got from that i still feel like I just want to keep moving like that i I wonder if any of their albums are like consistent with the vibe or they just experiment a lot from song to song and have a lot of different feelings and tempos. But I'm very curious to see what comes next. Next up, we got track number two, Body Snatchers. Uh, it makes me think of aliens and abductions. Is it going to be about that? Is it going to have a spacey vibe like a uh, subterranean homesick alien from OK Computer? Who knows? Will this sound like the vibe of the last song? Will it go a totally different direction? No idea. But let's check it out. Ooh. Very distorted rock guitar. I do not oh, yeah. What it is. Wow, that sound like check for Paul. It's almost like garage rock. Oh, now it's over there. Ooh. This is an interesting like noise panning effect. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Again, not at all where I was expecting this to go. Must have really paved the way for a lot of modern rock sounds. Again, I'm hearing like an influence for uh, Queens of the Stone Age. Like how I heard from uh, Mixomatosis. Such a fuzzy guitar sound. Yeah, how they mix it is crazy. It's just layered and some of it's pans all the way. They almost always have an instrument like on one side. Man. Really cool guitar tones. think that Radiohead would sound so rock-based. Maybe because of where they went with Kid A and Amnesiac. Wow, really builds an in intensity. Man, such a cool groove on this one. Guitar solos are just like the best. Just so weird. Oh man. Holy shit, that was good. Man. Yeah, like. It's just so. It's so rock centric. Again, I didn't. I thought they'd be like way softer on this album. I guess I just, it's funny how you can just assume an album's going to sound a certain way for no good reason. Like you just make an assumption about it. Maybe In Rainbows sounds pretty soft, right? Um, but so far it's just been very rock, rocky. And 
man, that was so good. Yeah, again, like, it just sounds... Like, I would say, like, oh, they must have listened to Queens of the Stone Age, but that's before Queens of the Stone Age. So, like, Muse and so many other more modern, raw, kind of post-punk bands just went a certain way, and they must have been just so inspired by what Radiohead was doing. If I'm wrong about that, let me know, but it just seems like they were ahead of the curve and kind of changing the landscape of where rock and music would go, like experimentally, electronically, um, in a rock way, mixing different genres together. I don't know if it sounded like aliens at all, but uh, they really snatched my brain away while I was listening because that was... I was just so out of my head and just into my body just uh, feeling that song. That was really cool. Well, two for two, that's a 10 out of 10 so far. Um, 100% of the time. I'm wondering if they're going to continue with this rock-centric sound. Very upbeat and kind of dancey and groovy and uh, just like kind of heavy rock, but kind of light and feel good. Are they going to continue with the rest of the album like that? Or is it going to just take a lot of left turns along the way? No idea. Next up is Nude, which is track number three. And again, no idea where they're going. Maybe based on the first two, that's a good indication of where the album's headed and where it's going to stay. But yeah, I just, I, fi I pictured or imagined a very soft electronic pop uh, experimental abstract album. Maybe it still will be that way. I don't know. But I'm loving it so far. And shit, it just sounds, sounds new and fresh. <clears throat> and uh, I'm excited to see what happens next. So let's move on to track number three, which is Nude. And let's go. Let's get nude. Ooh. Whoa. This is a little bit more like what I imagined. This is crazy trippy. It's kind of like the sound of when you reverse a sound or like a piano so it sounds backwards. Wow. Oh, and then it cuts out and goes to something different. That echo trail going over there. Now you get the little keys over here. It has a little bit of the vibe of like almost red hot chili peppers where they get like real soft. It's beautiful. Wow. The tone of the guitar is just like sweet. So don't get Very dreamy. Like kind of a sweet, soft dream. Almost like a memory. This is a 
a good song for a slow dance. You know, middle school. Vocals are gorgeous, very floaty, haunting if haunting were a positive, like a good ghost. Yeah, the way they mix their music to be just so atmospheric. This is definitely a bit more of what I expected the album to maybe sound something like. Three for three, that's a 10 out of 10. Nude. Well, it felt the most tender and vulnerable and gentle. So nude makes sense. No idea what he's singing about, but it felt, it felt nude. Yeah, they really do the atmospheric stuff is better than pretty much everyone. It was just so... Yeah, just beautifully mellow. I think they started doing atmospheric stuff kind of like that on OK Computer, which is very gentle and soft and atmospheric and kind of floaty, kind of dreamy. Or maybe even on the bends, you know, they had some songs that were really gentle like that too. But this is kind of just next level, very beautifully put together. That's not one you like rock out to. That's definitely the slow dance. To kind of just like take a little gentle break before we maybe get back into some more rock? No idea, but perhaps. So the next one is called Weird Fishes slash Arpeggi, which looks like Arpeggio minus the O. And Arpeggio being basically a chord with those notes ascending and descending often randomly with an arpeggiator, which kind of creates a feeling of movement. Do weird fishes move like an arpeggio? Is that why it's like that? Is it even, is it even worth guessing what these titles mean? I don't know. It's kind of fun. But really, you'd probably have to uh, read the lyrics to understand why these things are called the things that they're called. But I normally like the names. Weird Fishes slash Arpeggi. I say we check it out. Yep. Faster after the slow dance. Hmm. Now, I remember the name of this one. Back when I only liked a couple songs by Radiohead, like way back in the day. So I might have heard this one, but it sounded a little bit familiar, but I have no idea where we're going. So pretty much the first time. Well, the way that these notes are moving is a bit like an arpeggio. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. In the deepest ocean of yours. Nice vibe to this one. The Their drummer is really fantastic. Why should I? Guitar so soft and gentle but fast moving, but then the drum is like very crisp and cuts through the mix, which creates a nice contrast between the very gentle and the very crisp, the soft and the hard contrast. I like how it's building a little bit in intensity. Trippy background 
vocals. The song's really building nicely, especially with the percussion and now you hit more cymbal work. Yeah. Now I hear guitars on both sides. His vocals are really soaring. It's a really good, uh, like, feel good vibe to this album. A lot of their Kid A stuff was very almost like depressing, but this is like. Feels really nice. This is really nice. Yeah, the tones they get are just so nice. So intentional. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, that bass line. they can make with music is really unique. They have such an amazing ability to craft a feeling and build the dynamics. Yeah. I feel like this album is just would be great to listen to at the beach. Especially with a little and uh or some drinks. Um man, what a nice vibe. I think yeah, that's a little that's maybe something kind of like what I was expecting. A really greatly composed atmosphere and feeling and they build and they swell and they add things and sometimes they take away and they just sculpt this kind of changing feeling like it feels like music but it's om it's almost like it's almost a vibe beyond just like here's a catch here's a catchy chorus here's a verse it's more like oh here's here's an experience or here's a the feeling of a memory, you know, it has, it's kind of beyond what a lot of bands would do. So far, really great. Very different from Hail to the Thief so far. Yeah, very different. Much more, I'd say much more upbeat and beachy, summery. Feels like a great summer album. Yeah, this, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why this is such a popular album. It's very uh, easy to listen to and enjoyable to listen to. And there's so many subtleties and nuances and just interesting things to latch onto when you're listening that I'm sure that you just like start to memorize all that stuff the more that you listen. And you want to because it's so so just rich with texture and just how they compose it is just really fluid and yeah it just creates this feeling that you kind of take on while you're listening to it which is you know something that good music does is it kind of takes you to a different feeling and if you're listening to that while you're in a different environment from what you're listening to it can maybe even transform the environment to feel like that song. So since this already feels like the beach, I'm sure if you listen to this at the beach, it would feel even more like you're just really there present at the beach. Yeah, maybe. 
Am I onto something? Where do you guys listen to this? Do you take this out in nature? It feels like something where you want to be outside where the sun's shining. And maybe you hear the waves kind of like lapping at the shore. It feels like something you might listen to in a coffee shop during the summer and you get a nice iced latte with extra sugar and uh, syrup. And it's, it's very, it feels very sweet and gentle, but energetic and kind of a bit mellow, but also very upbeat and positive feeling. So, so far, loving it. So that's only been four songs out of 10. Whoa. Okay, so next is track number five called All I Need. All I need to listen to this song is my headphones, a microphone, my camera, and a little bit of water in a Star Wars Galaxy's Edge mug from Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Let's do it. This is uh, about halfway through the album after this track. All I need. Interesting vibrating tones. Ooh, kind of almost a slow hip hop beat. That kick drum's real nice, real beefy. Oh, damn. That's a fuzzy guitar or bass. It's almost like a synthy bass. I'm the next That's a cool rhythm and melody. I like it. Wow. I love how low that bass sound goes. That you choose to ignore. Or there's a little bit of fuzzy stuff. Some of the first, like, higher tones. Yeah, that's a really cool vibe. Oh, cool, cool. Some little uh, xylophones up here. Wow, <laughs> such a full sound, it's crazy. That kind of like rising feeling. Adding texture in the background. Nice piano keys. Wow. The way they layer and build almost every song. I like how his voice is quieter now that there's so much else going on. It's almost like the icing on top. But the rest is a nice beefy cake. A nice beef cake with icing. Dang. That might be one of my favorites. Honestly, I've I think I've loved every song so far. I have loved every song so far. That one was uh, such a nice vibe. It's funny. I didn't. I wouldn't have thought I'd be saying Radiohead has like a good vibe. Like I thought they'd be like kind of more depressing a little bit here and there, but in a reflective, interesting, artsy way, based on how they sounded on like Kid A. I wouldn't have thought they'd go to such a, just a feel good place. And I, you know, I like all different types of feelings when I'm listening to music, but I guess I just didn't predict Radiohead to have such a nice vibe to it. 
not on every track, but on this album so far, just very nice, nice vibes, positive vibes. But just, yeah, the way that they layer and texture and build and then take away, you don't really, you can't necessarily predict where it's coming unless you've heard the song before. And there's always moments that surprise me, which I love about Radiohead. It's hard to compare this band to another band. A lot of the things I love about Radiohead are similar to what I love about other bands, but the way that they do it is so different that it's almost hard to compare. Like, I love how unique they are. Like, I love how some other bands are very unique. But the what's unique about them is very unique to them. Does that make sense? Maybe. Um, yeah, they do their own thing very well in a way where it's like, oh yeah, that's almost obvious that it would work if you do that. That would be interesting if you do that. But it feels like in some ways they're the first to do a lot of the things that they're doing. Maybe it's just the way that they collage different styles and genres together that makes it seem like, oh yeah, of course. Why would you not do this? This sounds amazing when you do this. But were other bands really doing a lot of those same things? Maybe they're kind of taking inspiration from bits and pieces of other bands to uh, create their own unique sound. But this is awesome. I'm loving it. So we're now officially halfway through the album, which is a weird feeling. It's weird to be listening to this at all, honestly, since uh, I've been looking forward to it and thinking about it and kind of imagining what it might sound like for, you know, over a year. And actually listening to it is really cool, but different from what I expected, which is kind of what I expected, that I wouldn't really know what to expect. I've been really loving how this album has been flowing, and uh, all these songs definitely feel like they belong together, maybe more than the songs on Hail to the Thief felt. That just felt like a really cool, diverse collection of songs. This album, I think, probably feels more unified, and it's not like they aren't still doing a diverse amount of things musically, it just maybe has more of a cohesive vibe to it overall so far. But we're on to track number six next, which is Faust Arp. Arp being an abbreviation for arpeggio or arpeggiator. And Faust is, uh, I should know Faust, shouldn't I? I'll have to look that up. I feel like uh has to do with some famous writer or philosopher. I know the name. Anyway, let's listen to the song. Faust Arp. One, two, three, four. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. It's on again, off again, on again. Watch oh. Dominoes in pretty patterns, fingers in the back of pie and tea. Wow, it's doing so much already. <laughs> I feel like I missed a chance to talk about these things. The acoustic guitar, the rising synths, or violins. Um, very orchestral on this one. Squeeze the tubes and empty bottles. I take a bow, take a bow, take a bow. I like that. The kind of changing rhythms and type signatures there. Really cool vocal rhythm. I think of what this reminds me of. Maybe a little Led Zeppelin again. Or 
just kind of like folk music, but then very orchestral. Yeah, really cool. That felt almost a little bit like the kind of lullaby song from the last album, but maybe just the most similar from what I've heard from this album so far, but had something about it that was just very kind of gentle and soothing, especially with the strings. Um, sounded like violins, maybe cellos as well, but probably violins. Um, yeah, just had a very nice, moody, gentle flow to it. But I really liked the, uh, the, the, the changing time feeling. It would have like a, just a bar or two and then kind of go back to that, that cycle and then kind of like get stuck in this little, this little area of a rhythm that would kind of repeat a couple times and then go back to the more uh, natural flow of things. So it had kind of a little stop-start feeling to it, which I like, because that's a little out of the norm. You don't hear that in a lot of songs. But I like stuff like that, that you can't quite follow it the first time, but after a few times, you really latch on to that as being maybe one of your favorite parts of the song because the rhythm's so interesting and uh, unique. Yeah, that was cool. I think that was maybe outside of the norm, a little bit more than the others, but they've all had their own unique sounds so far, but they all still definitely go together. So, feels cohesive as an album, for sure, so far. I guess the ARP aspect of that would just be the, uh, the uh, plucked strings of the acoustic guitar that were kind of moving up and down a bit. But yeah, just felt very gentle, kind of folky, a little old-timey in a way you know you could imagine someone playing that at a picnic in uh the medieval times but there's like a backing orchestra kind of behind the minstrels playing so in that way it felt very modern because it was combining different feelings that don't necessarily always go together in a way that created a new feeling and overall, just a very nice, nice vibe. Oh, man. We only got four songs left. Dang. I don't want to say that's sad because I'm just going to listen to this album a lot. But, and there is, a, you know, in Rainbow's Volume 2, right? Or Disc 2. So... But there's a bunch of good songs on that, too. I think that's an eight-track kind of bonus album. So maybe I should listen to that next. I don't know. Not tonight. Not tonight, though. Okay, so up next we got track number seven, Reckoner. Reminds me of last night. I was with uh, my lady friend, and I was Reckoner. Okay, sorry about that. Um... Let's move on to the song, shall we? Here we go. Reckoner. Whoa. Very crashy percussion. Very like metallic. And then very gentle guitar. Again, kind of reminds me a little bit of some of the vibe of like the soft guitars of Red Hot Chili Peppers sometimes. I like how you hear the shaker over here. Yeah, I like how the percussion keeps going back and forth. I mean, the dude can sing. The bass is swelling in too. I gotta say, nice vibes again. It's crazy. 
crazy how they can have such a harsh sounding percussion with such smooth, gentle guitar. And then his voice is just like sitting above all of that. Just so gentle and like humbly majestic. Oh, we got a vibe shift going on. Because Whoa. Oh, that's some tension. Wow, very orchestral again. Damn. Just the chorus of his voice is... Oh yeah, here we go. I like the shaker. And then... Some strings again, yeah. the drumming. Yeah, this album is super cohesive. Definitely feels like all these songs belong together. That was, yeah, this is just a beautiful album. I don't know what the uh, In Rainbows comes from, if that's like a lyric within the album that they've already said or that they haven't said yet, but something about a rainbow, which is just bright and colorful and a feel-good energy is pretty similar to just the vibe of the album. And... uh Compare compare the vibe of this album so far to OK Computer, which was kind of almost like a dystopian, kind of bleak, um, apocalyptic, social commentary type of vibe. This is like the opposite of that, you know? It would be like talking to two totally different people. One who's like almost like a conspiracy theorist, uh, paranoid about the world, Versus someone who's like, yeah, maybe, but I'm just going to go surfing at the beach, man. Like, I'm going to enjoy the time I have and the people in my life. I'm going to, you know, make the make the most of it. Like, that's such a huge contrast between those two different energies. And, and yet this has some of the rock of, like, Paranoid Android or um, Electioneering. You know, but the, the vibe of this is just so much more, like, energetic but mellow at the same time. They really do that that vibe really well, where it's kind of two different energies happening, but the combined energy is just really nice. Really nice. It's a nice vibe. I've never said nice vibe so much about an album before, or about music, and that might normally seem boring, but the way that they do a nice vibe is very artistic and pleasing to the ear. So, I mean, they're they're killing it with this album. I mean, I can see why this would be considered uh, such a masterpiece and one of people's favorite albums, if not their favorite album by Radiohead. Like, a, I could see it being pretty tough to top, and I wonder if on the next couple albums, if they go for go for, not go for, a more bleak or more mellow or more heavy vibe. No idea. Um, but don't tell me. I kind of enjoy discovering that along the way. So next up we got House of Cards. This is track 8 out of 10. Does that mean that everything's going to start crumbling down now? Falling apart? 
Are we going from optimism into pessimism? Or, or is that just the name of it? Um, let's find out. House of Cards. Oh, great. Love it. Wow. That, like, bass shake is crazy. Is that the foundation of the House of Cards? Because that's a strong foundation. With such a nice, pretty vibe to the guitar. Wow. So much reverb on those voices. It's like... Within a beautiful cathedral or something. That's such a cool energy. I don't want to be your friend. I know this song. <laughs> wow, I had no idea this was Radiohead. Maybe I shouldn't say why I know this song, but... <laughs> Let's just say... Uh, a lady sent this song to me once. This is so echoey. It's very much a uh, a love song, isn't it? I've only heard a little bit of this song. Or maybe I've heard the whole thing. But this is the first time I've heard it with headphones and... Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because uh, the other time I heard the song was in a... The infrastructure will collapse. Man, the sound of his voice is amazing. This is going to be like one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. If you know this song and you haven't heard it with good headphones, you haven't heard it. Man, the atmospheres they create is like otherworldly. song was the backing track in a very sexy video I got from a lady I was dating once. So, uh, <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little funny to hear it now. Am I blushing? That bass sound just really holds it together. Because the rest of it's so floaty, but it really like grounds and holds it down and creates this like crazy, this crazy feeling of like holding it together. Damn. Well, that was a sexy song. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that must have been a single, or it must be a well-known song, right? Because that's, uh, that's a killer song. So powerful, so chill, so filled with love and beauty and atmosphere. And man, the way it was mixed was just so well balanced between the highs and the lows. They do it like nobody else. There's only two songs left. This whole experience of listening to this album has been kind of surreal, honestly. I feel like, again, it was totally different from what I expected. 
and yet felt perfectly, it felt perfectly like the radio head I've come to know and love in that I always expect the unexpected. So in that way, perfectly meeting my expectations of not knowing what to expect. Next up, we got the second to last track, number nine, which is Jigsaw Falling Into Place. I do love a good puzzle. And it seems like Radiohead really loves assembling their songs almost like a puzzle or a collage of piecing things together in a really interesting, beautiful way. So let's check it out. Starting with an acoustic guitar again. Well, it's nice uh, hi-hat work to keep it moving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Some pretty interesting chords they're using. Creating this feeling of a little bit of uneasiness, but the percussion's like really driving it. I love you can hear like the buzz of the strings. Just as you take my hand. Wow. Just as you and then it's singing so low compared to the highness of those vocals that he created to create this kind of chorus. The bass is so smooth and keeping things moving. Wow. That's a really cool new guitar line. I like how there's two guitars playing slightly different notes too. His voice, man. You can hear a little bit of that like nasality to his voice that he had much earlier on. But he's got so much more like maturity and deepness to his voice, even with that higher note. When he wants to, but then he can also create this like heavenly atmosphere with his voice around it too. So good, so good. just like a master class in creating a nice vibe <laughs> a nice artsy vibe just feel good interesting fun upbeat summery it, ha it hasn't felt at all repetitive and yet all these songs sound like oh yeah these all go together it's a somewhat similar vibe overall throughout the album and yet how they're creating the vibe and the instruments they're using and the, the tone and the texture of the instruments and the panning and the mixing of it all is all very different song to song. And yet they're creating such a similar feeling each time, which is pretty cool. I guess like a lot of my favorite albums do tend to have an overall feeling. Um, and that's what makes it often feel like an album and not just a playlist of songs that are all cool. 
Like, I don't think it's as maybe as experimental as Hail to the Thief, but it sounds like they really just know how to make great songs on this album instead of just audio experiences like Hail to the Thief was a little bit more like. This is more like they're going to craft a beautiful song that takes you through a lot of very interesting audio experiences and yet it, it feels like, oh, this is a song, not just like a an art collage. You know, this feels more like songs that you that you really like vibe to. So in that way, yeah, it's it's less abstract. It's more like, oh, they found their voice, you know, for for an album. Like they created something that has an iconic sound to an album. And it's very cohesive. So the last track is called Videotape. Are we taking a left turn? Or are we going to kind of sum up the album? Or are we going to end with a lot of high energy or kind of mellow energy and just kind of taper out? Taper out with videotape? We'll see. Let's find out. So far pretty mellow, but it could go somewhere very different. This will be on my video tape, my video uh, tape. Those bass notes are pretty cool. And if a star flees, it's just beneath and is reaching out. Tom York's really good at servicing the song with what the song needs vocally. But he'll do a lot of different things. Ooh. That's a cool way for percussion to come in. I feel like we're probably building to something. Well, he did mention the pearly gates. And it does sound like a kind of finale. A finale to life. That sounds almost like a little offbeat as it kind of like rolls through. This is my way his voice like an instrument like it's not necessarily always distinguishable what he's saying but it almost doesn't matter it's about how he delivers it this is a little bit of a different vibe from the rest of the album I like how it's like Interesting stuff happening over here. <laughs> also, the hi hat works. Interesting rhythm, too. It's just like a little bit of time where there's something happening. Which kind of keeps it from actually like having momentum, just a little bit at a time. But it does feel like it's meant to be a little like reflective, like kind of pondering life. That's the album. Yeah, that was a little bit like how Kid A kind of ends on a very kind of mellow, like afterlife funeral kind of vibe. I think it's a nice 
kind of mellow, calm, closer feeling. Like that song wouldn't really work anywhere else in the album. It kind of needs to be the closer. Like it feels like it's intended to be the closer on purpose. So it didn't have as much of a, a beach vibe. It was more of a reflective vibe. Like, all right, this is kind of the end of the day. This is the end of the life, end of the line. This is now, okay, the party's over, but it was a good party. It was a good life. It was a good moment. It was a good album. And you kind of want to fade out like that, I think. That song was kind of like a cool down after a workout. It works well as a song that takes you back down to earth. I have now heard In Rainbows. That was awesome. That was very unlike all their other albums. It totally makes sense that that's like the next step. You could hear maybe some hints of that in Hail to the Thief. But it just felt like they they found a different sound because of all the other places they'd been before. So because of that, it's almost a culmination of everything they had experimented with, with mixing and really interesting audio textures, but also great song making in addition to like abstract experimentation. Like there was still experimentation, but it almost felt like we know what we're doing. We know how to craft a song and still have it be very unique. So is that now my new favorite Radiohead album? Hmm. I don't know yet. I think that's very possible. So I've, I've mentioned that this is a very kind of summery vibe to this album, and it's perfect timing because it's uh, halfway through June, so we'll, I'm very much in the middle of summer at the moment. I feel like overall as an album... This was definitely, must have been like a huge success. Like not only for the band, but for their fans, for music lovers, for maybe people that didn't like the more abstract experimentation of Hail to the Thief. I'm sure that people who have loved Radiohead at all before probably really loved this album when it came out. But they might have been like, I have no idea where this band's going because they took all these crazy left turns with Kid A and an Amnesiac and then Hail to the Thief. This one felt um, maybe the most like OK Computer in that it's very palatable. I could see it appealing to the mainstream and also appealing to people that like more artsy experimental stuff because none of it is like predictable or boring or you know straightforward it's very it's very out there and artistic and creative and yet instantly digestible at the same time so maybe they found like a really good balance with their fans with this album too. Like what was your first experience like when you heard this album? Did you feel like, okay, radio's back in a way where I can love them again because I didn't like their previous stuff? Or did you love the journey up until this album and love this album too? Did you see this album coming? Like I knew that this was going to be a great album because people love it. But before this came out, did you feel hesitant or doubtful that you'd like this album? And then did you love it? Or did this album take a few listens for you to get into it? Because I feel like this is pretty, still pretty out there, still like very creative, in some ways kind of abstract, but I would think most people that like music would probably like this album. I don't know. Do people not like this album? It doesn't really matter, like music's subjective, but I would feel like probably more people would like this album than maybe like Kid A or Amnesiac or Hail to the Thief. Yeah, I feel like maybe this album has the most wide 
ranging appreciation. Because if you like stuff that's kind of easy to digest, or you like stuff that's very artistic and creative, both those people are going to love this album and kind of come together over it, right? So I'll be honest, it's a little strange having finally heard this album because I've kind of imagined what it might sound like for over a year. And now that I've heard it, I know what it is. There isn't still like the doubt of what it might sound like. But luckily, I still have two albums left and some live stuff. So you're going to have to tell me what I should listen to next. Should I really like learn a lot about what they've already done? Should I watch an interview with the band or with Tom York? Should I watch all the live stuff that they've done thus far to really see like how they're making it before I move on to the new stuff? Or should I just do like the studio albums and then like take a deep dive back and rediscover stuff that I've already listened to? But like in a live setting or seeing them actually create it live. What's the best way to do it? Is there no bad way to do it? Should I just do whatever I feel like? I don't know. People were already making a lot of suggestions for what I should do. It does seem like I should probably dive into the live performances just to see how they make it. And I'm pretty curious because it does sound like such studio albums, like this one and the last few where they'd have to like layer a lot of different tracks in a lot of different sessions. But I suppose maybe they can actually create all of this live, maybe with some loops, different people playing multiple instruments. I don't know, but that would be cool to see. And especially since this, especially since this is becoming one of my favorite bands. Yeah, it's one of my, it's one of my favorite bands. Um, and I haven't really heard them talk I haven't heard their perspective on how and why they make music. And I haven't seen them really make music. So I'm sure the more that I see of that, the more I'm just going to fall even more in love with this band. I appreciate all the comments and all the suggestions. This is a band that uh, I don't know too much about. I should, ev I should know like the names of all the band members. I don't. I don't know if it's... No, it's not on here, but uh, let's see. I've probably seen these names before, but I haven't said them out loud. So, let's see. Radiohead is Colin Greenwood. Johnny Greenwood. Oh. There's brothers in here. Ed O'Brien, Philip Selway, and Tom York. Was it all the same band members throughout all of Radiohead's discography? I don't know. Produced and mixed by Nigel Godrich. I feel like I know that guy's name. Strings performed by the Millennia Ensemble. Artwork by Stanley Donwood and Dr. Chalk. I have a good feeling that this album is going to become a lifer. You know, something that shapes how I listen to music and probably will become one of my favorite albums. And uh, it's always interesting to hear an album for the first time where you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to listen to this a lot. And I'm going to memorize the fuck out of this album. Well, it's official. I've heard this album. And I love it. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And, uh... Maybe it was even like listening to it for the first time again. Because that's why I watch reaction videos. I like seeing people hear stuff that I know and love. And uh, on a first listen, definitely loved it. I think it lives up to the imagery of this too. Like very bright, colorful, cosmic, painterly. A little abstract, but also pretty damn beautiful. Anyway, that was super fun. Thanks for watching. And uh, let me know what I got to check out next.
Yeah. Good stuff.